Okay, restarting this episode real quickly, people. Sorry about that. No, the, uh, the, the microphone... The microphone glitched. So I'm glad I caught it now before we got like 30 minutes into the show. No sound. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, anyways, we're starting a review, albeit late, of the Mac Pro. It's what, what I was saying uh, that I realized the sound was not recording was I, I've just always looked at the Mac Pro. I, I know this is not a machine meant for the end user. This is a machine meant for a more power user to lightweight professional. Uh, and, uh, I mean, for machines in that league, it's not as obscenely priced as, as it looks like it is. But I also look at it, and every incarnation of it, especially the last three or four, I just... I, I understand the change in the uh, Intel chips was, was Intel. Uh, that, that wasn't Apple doing that. But even with this one, it, I'm sorry, if you're doing that type of work, like if you're a video editor or you're doing a lot of rendering or, or you're doing the type of professions where this machine is obviously intended for, and uh, it, there's a real divide in this. Uh, the people I know who are in these professions, it's like they're, they're either I love Apple and even though it costs me more money, I'll buy a Mac Pro and give Apple all the extra money I need to to get the baseline features I need in this machine that they don't include in it. Or they're, you know, I can't afford to waste all that money on things that should be included by default. And that goes back to the whole thing. This thing just, it's always felt like a mixed mesh machine because honestly, most of the people I know that are in that target zone that this machine's intended for, uh, which is super power user to low end pro. If you're a true pro, a Mac Pro kind of falls a little short. But if you're low end pro, uh, just you, you're not doing extreme stuff, but you're doing stuff that needs a good machine. You need good resources, good other stuff. I, I think. Uh, what do you? I mean, I guess what would you consider pro? Um, uh, well, for the purposes of this machine, some video editors, some planchers, in some cases game developers or, or uh, 3D rendering, uh, thing like that, and, and those are professions. Uh, the thing with all of this stuff uh, is you start eating terabytes for breakfast. It's like you don't measure your capacities in gigabytes anymore. You're like, how many terabytes can I have, sir? <laughs> in, in, some, in, in some cases, you want to hook up... Uh, Okay, I'm going to say this wrong. I want to say petabyte uh, an array, uh, <laughs> uh, array of systems assist, uh, which means not having RAID standard is one of those things that has just always bugged me like hell about the Mac side of this, which is the Mac Pro. It's like, it, it's... It, I, I've never understood why that's an extra feature. If they want it, if they don't... <laughs> it's still a $700 uh, PCI card on the Mac Pro. Okay. It still is. Uh, and, I can, and, and there are some benefits to having it be a separate card as opposed to on the board. And if Apple wants to do that at that extra cost, that's their sure. call. But they should, they should put it in the system by default. It's like this, this latest version finally has five uh, expansion slots as opposed to the old one having four. So you can now have five things in there. If you add the RAID, you have you can now have four graphics cards and RAID. It's like they should advertise this machine as a four expansion slot capability machine. Because in all practicality, if you need to buy this machine, if this is the Mac you need to buy, you need that RAID card. Uh, the other thing, I've always felt it's a little light in hard drive capacity for, for yeah, those professions. Seven hundred dollars or something. Five hundred, seven hundred dollars. Right, Just to add the RAID, it's seven hundred dollars, um, which it, it is not unreasonable. But on the same token, the type of if you shop around, the type of RAID card they're adding in, although I don't know for a fact if it'll work with the Mac, because I, but on the PC side, if you need to add a RAID card like that, you can get them for as cheap as two hundred fifty, three hundred bucks. It, yeah, it, sure. it, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It, uh, honestly, it's a lot cheaper though just to build it into the board. It's more cost effective on both sides. It's one of those things. It does. It can't be saving them that much on the board. Um. Uh, I guess they just want to sell these raid cards. 
Uh, the, the other thing, when you're doing large files like that, m memory becomes necessary. It's not a luxury, it's I need a good chunk of memory. I mean, uh, I mean the, honestly, the ideal configuration for a system like this is something that if you configured a Mac Pro like this, you, you would you you'd go, why did I buy a Mac Pro? Because on the PC side, typically speaking, you'll have eight or ten serial ATA connectors. Assuming you're using serial ATA and you're not using, um, God, I can't remember what it is, the, the SAS, or that's actually faster than serial ATA, which some people will use. Uh, but usually for this grade stuff, serial ATA is fast enough. But the configuration I see more often than not is you have your OS on one hard drive, you have your scratch partition on another hard drive, so you burn two drives right there, and then you have the rest of your drives, depending on the type of work you're doing, in a RAID array that suits your needs. If you can deal with the slower speeds, you're either using a RAID 10 or a RAID 5. If you need pure speed and you don't really care so much about backup, but you need speed and size, what's important for you, you're using a, you're using a RAID 0. And, and just, you, you're turning drives over every 6 to 24 months as bigger hard drives become cheaper. Are you comparing them to um, Because I can go to HP Pro and their prices are extremely high, in my opinion, um, for a workstation. I, I, you know, I don't know if, um, like, they have two, there's one for five grand, you know, they have two uh, Z, um, Xeon six core processor for about 5289 Um Then it goes, there's a model for 5899 and then you got to see an Intel Xeon 6 core, 6289 The highest priced one is 8999 for two Intel Xeon quad core processors at 3.46. Comes with 16 uh, gigs of RAM. That's the thing. Um, it's like if you'll notice on, uh, on the Mac, the most RAM you start out with is six. Right. So I mean, it, 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 it's it, 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 when I look at the Mac Pro, it, it's it's almost yeah. like they tried to figure out how can we make this seem cheap. And well, check they, it out. If it's it's if it's five thousand for a two six core Intel Xeon, right? HP is is five thousand eight ninety nine for two. Um, it's 2.93. So. Uh, which you know. machine are you looking at on HP? Let's see. Um, I'm trying to get the same. Uh, let's see, 2.8. They don't have 2.6. They have 2.93 uh, here and a 2.80. Yeah, they're putting the better um, Xeons in. They're not putting the. They're not starting with the two point sixes. The other thing is, uh, it's like I'm not looking at the same page you are right now. If I recall, also, um, Apple is the only one at this point that is still using the three thousand series Xeons. Everyone okay. else is using the five thousand and seven thousand series. What? Well, well, here is a okay. They offer two two point nine three gigahertz six core. Um, and HP. So HP starts off at five thousand eight ninety nine, and the Mac Pro I believe is at six one ninety nine. Um, the memory is exactly the same, but you get one terabyte hard drive with the Mac Pro and three hundred twenty gigs for the HP. Um, uh, again, so I can look at the same specs you're looking at. Which model of machine are you? Like, what's the, what are the HP calling this? It's called the uh, H. HP Z800 workstation, FM014UT. Now, the, I love how the HP always markets. Originally priced at six thousand seven hundred. Yeah, I, I, I don't like that crap either. That's just. Uh.
Here, I'm looking at the Z800 in the um, configure your own model. Let's see, configure PC. Yeah, Z800, um, FM 014UT specifications and warranty. It starts at 5899 You get 6 gigs of RAM. Uh, that is a uh, Windows 7. 2 Intel Xeon 64 processors. And 2.93, which is ex that's the exact same Hertz as a Mac Pro. Internal drive base, it's got 4. So I'm looking graphics. at graphics is actually not even included in that price. <laughs> See, I, I must be looking at a different model because I'm over here looking at the HP Z800. Yeah, I'll email it to you. Uh, I just posted in the show page because the one I'm looking at is starting somewhere between 1800 and 3600. You should be getting it soon. So yeah, this one doesn't even have graphics. Um, cable box support, removable power, universal Kensington cable box chassis. Um, so anything, um, it does have an okay. It does have an integrated set of six-channel RAID controller, but it does not include graphics. So that's like a trade-off. <laughs> Okay, I see the one you're looking at, um, but if you go, like, go up to the search bar mm -hmm. and search for Z800. Okay. Okay, and when that comes up, like on the thing, click configure. When I searched for Z800 products for, uh, it's, let me see, I, I searched, I, I, went, Is that what you're talking about? I, I went to Google and I Googled Z800, and I clicked the okay. second link, which is H10010, blah, yada, 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 workstation overview, small, medium, yada, yada, and so forth. I go in there, model overview specifications, access, configure your model. Yeah, and it says configure, right? Yeah, configure your model, <laughs> and then the configure PC. <laughs> that's a smart buy. Pro uh, that's a smart buy. Is that like a lease type thing? Smart buy HPZ hundred. What is that? Ardem. Because this is a Xeon. E, well, E5, that's not, that's not the same process as C. 2.4, 2.4, 2.53. Um, and, and the far one on the right that starts at 3600 is the same base processor they're putting in the Mac. So that's that's a 6 core, right? Yeah. So let's mess around with that one. One single 6 core or two? You're going to have to add the second six course. You're going to have to uh, add options and buy to find out the real price on that. So let's go ahead and mess with that one. I think this one's just as much of a mix mash for this market as a Mac, to be quite honest. <laughs> Yeah, I think, so. I think the Mac Pro, every time I check against workstations, is very competitive. It probably wasn't it's what I was getting into, though, is this machine is a mismatched market uh, as a whole, this whole market. Uh, and I've... The lines, about, the, the lines are blurred about what is a, a true workstation. I agree, but that's, that's, you can thank you Thank you and tell for... For that, all that BS that they do with creating gray lines within um, what is the best type of workstation.